going back to the three-wear, uh, we've enabled, clicked on this button, and you'll see another window come up. And this allows us to access the controller. Actually, I want to take it back. If we click on this, the three-wear usually brings up a window. I'm already logged in, but uh, we can log out. So you can see that, here we go. Uh, when you log in, you want to select administrator. Default password is three-wear. We'll let it load up. And you're seeing a warning here. Now, it's pretty difficult to do a RAID migration live and being able to be on time to show somebody, you know, how it works. And in this case, what we're going to show is a simulated effort that we're going to add a drive. Here we already added a drive. And, of course, I start this, uh, I think it was yesterday, about uh, oh, early in the morning. And you can see how long it can take. Even though when I set up in the controller settings, do fast rebuild set to five. And uh, before previously, you want to make sure that this fast rebuild, and of course, I set the verify to its least, and I went to fastest I.O. And of course, low latency for the fast rebuild. Now, some of the settings here that you might want to have preset is uh, that they recommend is the right cache to be on. Uh, in cases for read cache, it's default to intelligent, which is uh, good for streaming. If you're doing to do basic, which is good for, you know, random small block IOs, uh, set it for the basic. I turned off auto verify. Again, that this can uh, create some overhead. And, of course, the overwrite ECC I really don't have any need for. Or in queuing, you can set that if you wish. Now, the performance is where if you, they recommend that if you have a battery backup uh, unit attached to the three-wear controller, then performance is uh, best selected. Otherwise, use the uh, protection value for right through. So you want to be able to set the right cache on, uh, make sure that's on, and the disk cache is enabled by default, so you won't have to. So going back to the maintenance of the controller, what I've done is in order to take an existing RAID array and you want to increase that uh, and migrate that to that, expand your existing RAID array. So here I have a RAID 0. What you want to do is you want to click on the unit. Then you want to say migrate. Now immediately it will be able to see what is available. So we have a virtual port 3, which is this disk right here. Virtual port 3. So we're going to select again, migrate unit, select the disk, and here I'm using a RAID 0. You can change on the fly, but I like to, for just for expediting reasons here, we're just going to go ahead and demonstrate, and we're going to select this drive. And once this is complete, it's pausing for a second, it's going to add the new drive in, and it's going to start expanding your RAID array. When that's completed at 100%, what you're going to see at this point, if we go back into the DSF server, we're going into the volume groups. When it's complete, you're going to see this available capacity. So if we added another terabyte to that existing 1.8, uh, then you would be able to ex add that to your existing volume. So how would you be able to do that? What you would do is you would say, okay, I want to select this unit, which is the, your newly added migration to your RAID array, and you would select Add to VG00. Then hit Apply. Now, this message, do not be alarmed. Basically, what it means is that the data on your disk will be erased. It will not be your existing data on, let's say, unit S00 or your volume group 00. So only referencing to the new available unit, which is obviously we want to be able to empty anyway. And add that to our existing volume group because it is going to be formatting. And once it's done, it's added to this existing volume group. Now, let's go take a look. We should see now over 2 terabytes. And here is the update. Now, the question previously was uh, the 
in that form is that do you have to do a reboot? In some cases, you may have to because you're not able to see the existing capacity added on or it's not available to be free. So what would you have to do? Uh, you would have to go into the console screen. And in console, there is a tool called PV Resize. So this is where that one question was referencing to, is why do I have to reboot? Because the logical volume manager needs to update it. So if we go into the extended tools by doing Control-Alt-X, enter the GUI password, and then select PV Resize, which means physical volume resize. Uh, obviously, we just did it up so we don't have to, but what you would see is the available size amount to be able to add to your existing volume group. Restart the system, and all your capacity is updated. Now, previously, we talked about uh, how do I really test the rate array? How do I know its performance? Uh, things of this nature. Uh, there is a small update that I think many of you should have if you consult with me or I can upload it through the file transfer. It's this small update that I want to provide you. I added it on to this existing volume. In many cases, you can do small updates, and they'll show up right underneath the current version that you're using. It's called a disk performance test under console. So this will be able to test my values and speeds and performance of uh, your rate array. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if you ask me, I'll provide you that small update. And that small update basically uh, just must be installed in, from the GUI. And then after you reboot, uh, you'll have this uh, disk performance test. Now, if you want to test it, let's go to this system here. And we'll go to Control-Alt-T for tools. And here's where you want to be able to test your disk uh, speeds. If you go to Add-ons, and you'll see Disk Test. And also, I do want to make a note that you want to make sure for the reads, you can go ahead and format your uh, volumes, but for your write test, uh, it needs to not be formatted, not into, it must be an available unit. So if it's already in use, you won't be able to use the write test. But we can go ahead and use the retest. And now we see available, which is S000. And so it's going to perform a short uh, retest, and this will give you your output. Just momentarily, we should see it come up. Oh, I forgot about this, is that, yes, uh, somebody was mentioning that you might, if the reason it probably is taking a little bit longer is we're doing a RAID mi migration currently right now. So while the RAID migration is happening, um, this is killing the performance, and so it's going to take a little bit longer than necessary. So normally you would see that immediately, and we wouldn't have this performance issue, this time value. So let's try to set up another one. And let's use an available system. So here, we know that we have the three rare uh, being used to uh, do the rate of migration. Let's go to another system that we have available. So we have another one, which is uh, on the LSI array controller. And we have two units, S00 and S001, available. So let's test with that one. Okay, we have to set up to be able to do that. You need to go to Setup, Administrator, because we need to get console access to that system. So let's scroll down. We go to Setup, Administrator. And we see it's using a different port. Let's set the password. And 
And let's go back into Putty. And here we go, we have it up. And the other thing is we do need to check to see if that small update is loaded. So let's verify and maintenance small update. Ah, we do have it on. So we've already added it in there. Again, this uh, file is the upd underscore 524 underscore dss underscore v6 update. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and put this on the chat window for many of you to reference to. That way, if you email me, I'll provide this to you. And if you could hold off, I'll get to all your questions in just in a minute. So let's go back to the system here. And we're going to go Control-Alt-T in Tools. Go to Add-ons. Disk Test. Let's do a read test, and let's select S001. And while we're waiting on that, I'm wondering if I can go ahead and get creative. There we go. We have a read test. Now, obviously, your reads would be higher than that. I'm using a single disk, so we can also try a write test. So you can see the values on that. And while that's waiting, uh, let's go ahead and run that. And just give me a moment, and I will go ahead and see if we can get the RAID Web Console tools working. So if we have completed a write test. So before you tune your system, set your parameters up to use the LSI or 3-Ware settings for the read cache, uh, the write cache, the disk cache, uh, rapid recoveries, uh, the, read write, the read policies, the write policies uh, that we've talked about. Then go ahead and perform this uh, small update and test your system. Now, once you basically install the small update, you will have to restart the system. Make sure that the volumes that you have are not formatted. So you want to make sure that they are available when you do the right test. Let's see if we're able to get into the uh, LSI array controller. In the new feature uh, we have is in this uh, version that we have. Let's go to maintenance software update. One of the new, in this new release that we're going to be releasing is the Intel RAID Web Console Tools. Now, many of you noticed that in the past that there was an issue that you had to use the last Ethernet port or disable all of the NICs on the DSS v6 server to be able to access the RAID Web Console Tools. So why, why is this important? Well, if you look at the LSI RAID controller here that's embedded in our GUI, we have the RAID controller, but there's no function to set up the email or, let's say, set up the uh, other parameters that are there, such as, let's say, you wanted to do a firmware update. Well, we're not able to do that here. So you want to be able to have access to the LSI RAID controller and be able to set some other parameters. So the the main feature of being able to have the values here set or your RAID controller uh, are important, but with the now with this new update that we have, we now allow where you're able to uh, access it without going to the last Ethernet port or disabling all the Ethernet ports to be able to access it. 